An Arizona mother who was recently the victim of a deep fake kidnapping extortion plot uh, is joining us to talk about that scam. It used her daughter's voice and demanded money, a million dollars in ransom money at one point. Jennifer DeStefano testified before Congress this week to sound the alarm on the danger of artificial intelligence, urging lawmakers to regulate this uncharted territory before something like this happens to another family. It was my daughter's voice. It was her cries. It was her sobs. It was the way she spoke. I will never be able to shake that voice and the desperate cries for help out of my mind. It's every parent's worst nightmare to hear your child pleading with fear and pain, knowing that they are being harmed and that you're helpless. The longer this form of terror remains unpunishable, the farther and more egregious it will become. There is no limit to the depth of evil AI can enable. Jennifer DeStefano and her daughter Bree are joining us now. And Bree, for people who are not familiar with your story, I do want to point out you are safe, but you have always been safe. You were never in danger here. Jennifer, though, you had no way of knowing that when you got this phone call. We hear the emotion in your voice there from your testimony. Just walk us through, though, if you would, what those moments were like for you when you thought your daughter's life was hanging in the balance. Yeah, it was terrorizing even hearing myself speak. Um, it still brings tears to my eyes. It was absolutely terrorizing. I was so helpless and I didn't know which way to turn. I didn't know what to do. And I could hear her begging and crying for me with fear in the background. Um, you had one of your other children around. There were, some, there were some friends around. They were able to get in touch with your husband, get in touch with your daughter, confirm that she was okay, that in fact it wasn't her voice. Bree, do you have any idea how these scammers may have gotten a hold of your voice because they certainly used it to convince your mom. I actually have no idea because we've tried to trace this all the way back to my social media, um, but I really do not post videos of me using my actual voice. And even if I did, they were from when I was younger and I have a premature voice, so my voice was higher. But now I only post videos of me really just competing in sports, nothing of me actually using my voice. So it's really still a mystery to this day. Does that scare you at all, Brie? It does scare me because if they can get my voice in which ways I don't even know, then what else could they do with my family? What could they do with my mom? Do they have her location? Do they have my location? How can they get things and information out of this? And Jennifer, I know you're searching for those answers. The police said there was nothing they could do at the time because no crime had actually taken place. What has it changed though for your family? Um, it definitely opened my eyes. I had no idea the level of capabilities with AI. Um, we've had a lot of conversations about you can't believe everything you see, everything you hear, um, a family code word, uh, some different types of um, security measurements now that we use. And then we're also really hesitant. I, if I don't recognize a number or someone reaches out to me, even when AT&T reached out to me to try and uh, find out some more information about this. I didn't respond to them for weeks because I don't know who's really who and what's really real. And sometimes it's scary to even pick up your phone because there's the concern, I'm sure we've all heard, that if you say hello, then all of a sudden they may have your voice. When you testified before Congress, do you feel that you were heard by lawmakers? I do. Um, I was very happy that both sides have come together on this. Um, so that gives me a lot of hope that it's a unified mission. Uh, Senator Ossoff took it upon himself to call the Scottsdale Phoenix Police Department and uh, ask them what kind of protocol uh, they have for other victims of this. And they said, again, they were not able to do anything since no crime was committed. And he made a personal commitment that that will stop. So I do feel like this is actually finally being heard and that action's gonna be taken. Do you have a sense of what that action may be? Did they give you any indication? Uh, there's been a couple of different conversations, um, everything from watermarking so that they have traceability. Uh, it's really hard to trace at the moment. Um, some different types of things. It's, it's really hard to put your hands around exactly what can be done in the sense that it's so vast and so wide and what's already out there and how do you dial it back? So uh, a lot of it's trying to get ahead of it, but uh, there's a couple different opportunities out there. Brie, you mentioned um, you know, what you post now, uh, what you used to post, the, the, this confusion and the big mystery over how they got your voice. How has this impacted you, if it has, and the way you go about your daily life? This has impacted me in my everyday life just by being more cautious, you know? Um, I'm more tedious just even going out places by myself 
or just having that plan of action, you know, like what if this actually does happen? Just having things with me for protection and just being more aware. Jennifer and Brita Stefano, really appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning uh, and to share your story. I know it is still painful, um, but also so helpful for so many families. Thank you. Thank you so much for having thank us. Thank you so much. Poppy? Erica, thank you. What do you think, John Miller? Well, this is game changing in so many ways between you can already imagine going into a political season, you know, about the fakes and deep fakes that are going to be available, you know, from AI. You can then attach that to um, mischief here on the ground to what are the Russians and the North Koreans and the, the Chinese going to do with that. But if you get right down to a crime like this, um, this is, I mean, the story they just told about a parent hearing the phone ring and hearing their child crying in the background and saying, I messed up, you know, I need help. And then this voice coming on. So the keys here are uh, the object of that person who's demanding this money, their job is to keep you on the phone unbroken. They want you to, they want you to transfer funds, do all kinds of, they don't want you to pick up the phone and find out your daughter's really upstairs in her room doing her homework. Um, so the first thing is, you know, to figure out, does this have the signs of one of these scams? And this story is really important in recognizing that. You know, you want to say, okay, I'm not sure this is real. Ask her what her cousin Kelly's dog name is. You know, things that they haven't factored Smart. in there. The technology is really affecting crime in ways that are so unanticipated. I had a kidnapping in the NYPD where the person, you know, was missing and the ransom demands were coming in and we were looking for a ransom drop, you know, with airplanes and surveillance team. And it turns out the ransom was to be sent by Bitcoin. Huh. So now you don't have a ransom drop. And we're like, Bitcoin, what do we do with that in terms of figuring out where are the kidnappers, where are the victims? So these challenges will keep coming. And the, the issue with legislation is... To legislate against it, you have to first understand it. Yes. And we're just skiving the surface. It's a sad reality. Anytime there's a new technology, criminals swarm to it and weaponize it. And then it becomes an arm race between law enforcement, figuring it out, catching up. But public education is a key part of that, right? And I think that, that's very helpful even just to hear about those experiences that they just had. It's so interesting you say have, have that word. I mean, I think about, you know, our, our kids are all around the same age and we have a word of if you need me to pick you up at a party and you don't want your friends to know, you just let me know, right? This is your, I won't embarrass you as your parent. This is where you need that same word of, I'm gonna ask that word yeah. on the phone to know if it's you. To the point of politicians needing to understand this, yeah. Will Hurd was telling us in the break, former Congressman, this is something that he's really leaning into. Do you see politicians leaning into this because Americans are concerned about it? Yeah. I mean, are they going to be able to speak to it, too, in the way that they need to and as informed as they need to be? They're doing their homework right now, and they're playing catch-up in a lot of ways. But you had the White House. You had a meeting with President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. Um, they were meeting with the top CEOs of these uh, technology companies, trying to figure out where what the risks are and the benefits, because they feel like the benefits do outweigh the, the risks, but the risks are there. Do you think something that's different now than during social media? Mark Zuckerberg, when he started Facebook, the the motto, and it was his own words, move fast and break things. And then obviously he's reassessed since. Yeah. But that is not how someone like Sam Altman at OpenAI, the creative chat GPT, is approaching this. It's very different. And he and others are calling for rules of the road regulation now, not after they've taken heat, but now. Should that give us some hope? I think so. I think they're starting to take it seriously, but you're just seeing the machine moving right now. And their Congress is having hearings, the White House is mm -hmm. holding meetings. So you're seeing it kind of in motion, but stay tuned. I think more to come. Thank you guys very, very much.